Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. We got a great fun one for you today. We're using Divi 5 theme again here today. If I scroll down a bit, you're going to see a little parallax section pop in. As you can see, the background of that planet is moving at a different rate. And I've got a little spaceship just floating in over the top and a bit of text fading in over the top of that. As we scroll down the page, Spaceship disappears. It's going to go out like that. If we scroll back up, it's going to do the opposite in reverse, obviously. Really easy to do. No coding involved. I was just testing out the scroll effects that I used to use in Divi 4 to see if they'd work with Divi 5. And they do perfectly. I'll show you how to build this. No coding involved in this today at all. Really easy to do. So let's get started. I've got this page open down here. Let's roll down. We'll get rid of this section and we'll start from scratch. Okay, well, obviously I'm going to add a new section, a little blue button. In my section, I'm going to throw a single flex column. Obviously, you can make yours as complex as you want. I'm going to keep this fairly simple today. With mine, I just use the heading module. Whatever you want to call yours, obviously. And we'll style this in a minute. Let's just go back into our section now. And we'll put the background in. Background's always under content there. I'm going to throw a little image in. I think that's the one we used before. And let's put it in our section here. Perfect. Now, just so you can see a bit better, I'm going to give this section a minimum height of 100 viewable height of whatever screen people are looking at it on. To do that, we're in the section. Go to Design, Sizing. We roll down to height. I think I'll use minimum height. That way, if you've got a lot of content on smaller devices, it can get big, bigger. So I'm going to say 100 viewable height. So it's 100% of the viewable height of any device that it's viewed on. There it is right there. I know you can't see the title. It's actually out there. We'll fix that one in a moment. Great. Well, to add the parallax effect, if I just click back on the section here, Back to the content in the background here where we put the image in there third tab along if we roll down a bit we've got to use parallax effect if anybody doesn't know there's two different styles to choose from here first one's true parallax if i scroll down you'll see that that image is actually moving but it's moving at a different rate than the front of the website there that's what they call true parallax there's another option called css parallax which is also known as fixed background whereas if i pop it on that one that image in the background as we scroll up and down is going to stay absolutely static. That's really dramatic. I use that a lot, actually. But for days, for today's, I'm going to use regular parallax or true parallax, I should say. Fantastic. OK, now we've got that bit working. Let's make our little title or heading so we can see it. I'm just going to go and click on it and let's go into design. Here's our heading text. I think I want it. And H2, perhaps, let's make it so we can see it. I'll make it white in color. There it is. I'm going to pop it in the middle. I'll make it, let's make it uppercase, bold, as it's a big old title. And a lot bigger. Let's make it perhaps 100 picks. Great. And then underneath that, I want a little button. So I'm going to add a new module with a little dark button right there. There's the button. I'm going to leave it exactly like it is. Obviously, put what you want to say on the button right there. Add the link to where you want to take people with your button right here. I want mine to be in the middle. And I'd kind of like to see it. So let's go into the button down below here. We're under Design tab. I'm going to use Custom Styles. Button background. I'm going to give it a black. A little bit of opacity pull down. So we've got a hint of the site through it. And button border itself. I just want that to be perhaps one pixel white. And I guess we'll change that text to a white color too. Let's close that up. There's the button text. Perfect. I'm going to leave it just like that. Now, I kind of like that little title right to be 
in the middle of our little section here. Really easy to do. Just click on the section anywhere. It'll take you back to the section. I'm going to go down to layout. It should be set as flex. It is. I want to justify my content to the center right here. There we go. Perfect. And just to set it off a bit more, I'm going to give that a little bit of text shadow. The title there, I'm just going to click on the title. Design. Let's close layout. Here's our heading text. I'm just going to give it a little bit of text shadow. Just makes it stand out a little bit more. Fantastic. So we've got a nice little parallax section there, as you can see. With a nice little title right in the middle. Let's add a little flying source or whatever it is you want to add. To do that, I'm going to add a new row, little green button to add a new row. Again, I'm going to use a single flex column in mine. I'm going to throw in an image module. I click on it. I've got a little PNG of a little flying saucer here. There's no background on it. That's what I'm using for mine today. Great. Well, that's great, but I still want my parallax scroll and the button to be right in the middle. I don't want this really to be taking up any of that space. So we can fix that very easily. I'm going to go into the row that the actual image is sitting in. So if we look up here. Here's the image. Here's the column it's sitting in. Here's the row that the column's sitting in. I'm just going to click on that one. I'm going to go over to my advanced. I'm going to go down to position and I'm going to change it from relative to absolute. That way, it'll stay within the boundary of our section right here, and you can put it anywhere that you want. And let's start using some of our scroll effects now. I'll close that position. We're still in the row, remember. I'm going to go down to scroll effects under the advanced tab here. First one, we've got vertical motion. Let's enable that. By default, it puts a four in, a zero at the middle, and a negative four in on this side. If I roll up and down, you can see it's giving it some movement there, which is pretty much what I want. I'm going to adjust it there. We've got a viewport at the top that tells us when we're at the top, it's going to do this. When we're at the bottom, it's going to do this. So I'm going to start mine off. Let's give it a negative value. Let's perhaps try negative three. I think I used before. And then we'll put a positive value on the top side. And you can adjust the taste. I think I want it just a little bit more than that. I think, oh, I don't know, it's just dropping in from the top. That's just about going to do it. And you may notice that the top that spills out. And we'll fix that in a minute if you don't want that. I think that's going to be about right, actually. Then we can go over to the next one and enable some horizontal motion. And again, we've got the viewport once we enable it. So I think I'll start off, I want it coming in from the left-hand side. So I can make that, that's got to be a negative number. So let's try negative four and see where that puts it. Yeah, that's going to the corner there. That's about right. Then I want to end up over here somewhere. So we want a positive value over here. Let's try 10, see what that does. As you can see, it switched over there. I think that's going to work. At the top, it's staying there. We perhaps need to up that a little bit. Let's give that 12 so it actually goes out of the picture a little bit there. It should come back in and go across. Perfect. Now, what we need to do is just scale it down a little bit. Well, obviously, you do what you want to do. <laughs> but that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to scale it down a bit. So our... Fourth one across here is scaling up and down. Again, we'll go ahead and switch that one on. And let's see, when it starts off at the top here, I want it to be about 25% of its original height, which is pretty small, or original size, I should say. So let's put 25 in there. As you can see, that's made it a lot smaller. It's going to come in, it's going to go down, it's going to get bigger. And then I want it to sort of disappear into the background again by getting smaller. You could also use a fade effect on it when it goes out for a bit more draw, but that's up to you. So, again, let's try 25% on this side. So, it's going away, it's coming closer, getting bigger, and it's coming into the picture from up there. I think that's going to work for me. And obviously, if you want to, you can put a link on that image. 
and take people wherever you want to take them with it. Let's fix this little overflow problem we got. We don't want to see it once it's outside our little section here. Or like I said, if you do, it is pretty dramatic. You can make it spill out and come back up here if you want to, but it's not going to work for me today. So we need to go into our section, blue tab. Now oh, I'm going to hide the overflow. So anything that falls out of this section that's in it will not be seen. Again, over in advanced, we'll go down to visibility. Here's a horizontal vertical overflow. I want to change both of those to hidden so we don't see it when it flies out of our section there. It's working. It'll work perfectly on the front end. A little delay there on the back end with the scroll effect. Perfect. Now, finally, I just got my little title and button to fade in halfway up the page. If you want to do that, we can go into the row that it's sitting in. And again, we're going to go over to advanced and scroll effects. We'll close up visibility. I'm going to use fade for this today. There's fading in and out, the third one. We just need to enable it. And again, we've got our viewport up here. I really don't want to see it. Perhaps, well, that's almost going to work there. I think I might just pull this one up a bit, the viewport at the bottom. That way it won't appear quite so quickly. Let's see. Roll down. Yeah, it's pretty much appearing now when the spaceship flies behind it or in front of it. I think that's going to work for me. Great. Once you're happy, we can save again. If you wanted to, you could add another row on the bottom with another static image, and that would give it even more 3D effect. But I think this is going to work for my purposes today. So let's check it's going to work. I'm going to save the draft. I'm going to preview. And we'll roll on down. There's our little parallax section. There's our little spaceship coming in. There's our title fading in. And as we go down the page, our little spaceship's disappearing down the back there. And that is a really attention-grabbing thing to have on your site. It's going to get people's eyeballs on it pretty quickly if this sort of thing happens. Which is exactly what you want. So there you have it, guys. We're working with Divi 5 again here today. It's absolutely awesome. It's still in the beta stage, so it may have a few bugs. I wouldn't recommend you build client sites with it. I've got it on a few personal sites. I'll be updating my client sites probably when it gets to, let's just roll, probably when it gets to about 5.1 of the final release here. Now, as we're getting closer and closer, I'm going to be doing more and more videos with Divi 5. If you've got any questions either about Divi 5 or Divi 4, pop them down below. I'll do my best to answer them for you if I can, or make a little demo, demo video just like this one. So there we have it, guys. Nice little parallax scrolling section with a bit of animation going on there. I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.